Hello, 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 hello. I will tell a story in a minute, but as you might have guessed, I am just a little behind today. I'm having one of those weeks. The week that goes on forever and yet you get nothing accomplished. I have accomplished things. I have, I have. Am I not live? Oh my goodness, Robin Suzanne. I have got a whiny crybaby cat. Hello, hello. Somebody's watching with me, right? Oh, Francine, hello, hello. I'm glad you can make it. I did not get the live stream set up ahead of time, as everyone can probably figure out. But as more people come in, I will tell my story. Jackie made it. Hello, Jackie. What am I looking for? Wrong buttons. Jody made it. You're quilting. So Amy made it. Hello, everyone. I'm just setting up the live chat so I can see the comments. As many of you probably figured out, there was no warning ahead of time. I mean, you guys knew I was hopefully knew you. I, you guys were hopeful that I would be doing a live stream today since I mentioned it several times, but unfortunately I kind of forgot to set it up this morning. Now when the live stream is at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and I forget it's no big deal, I can just do it at 10 o'clock, but when I remember at 10 o'clock, then I'm like, well, um, I'm going live in 45 minutes, so I guess there's no point in setting up. Excuse me one second. <coughs> I am much better from my original allergy attack, but then we had a cold snap and my allergies went crazy again. Francine, sorry, so glad I'm here for once. I'm pushing the wrong keys. I pushed the wrong keys, it's all right. I'm not worried about it. I do the wrong keys all the time. Hello, Deb. I'm hoping you're putting Deb there because that's what you'd like me to call you. And I'm sorry if I call you Deborah later on by accident. Jurassic Park baby quilt. Nice. Oh, they got married. At, that's fun. Hawaii is fun. That's on one of my list of places I'd like to go. All right, let me put this. Excuse me as I butt in front of the camera. I'll put that there. We don't need to have this. I'll move it to the side. So you, most of you, thank you for watching the video of yesterday. You saw that today I'm going to be working. You like my nice neon green shirt? I tried to pull out something colorful. You're not going to see a lot of it, but you'll see a little bit here. Giovanna, you made it. Deborah, okay. Yay. Charlene made it. Oh, my goodness. I don't know about you guys, but when I have allergies, I can't see either. So I have to I'll put you over here this time. I'll rearrange stuff because I'm going to sew first. And then I will go ahead and start... Doing what? Oh, ironing and trimming blocks and stuff. I didn't have time, didn't take the time to figure out what I was going to be doing. I, I knew what I was going to do today, and I knew I wanted to make a scrappy quilt for my chair. So if the cats do anything to it, it can get washed all the time, whatever, because the cats like to sit in the chair with me, which is really great. Yeah, I try to buy a lot of colorful shirts when I buy them from Michaels and stuff. And these were from Joann's for $2.50. The last ones I bought at Michaels, I, you guys aren't going to be able to see, I don't know. But they have, they have this little tiny, you can't see, but there's this little tiny holes that develop right here. And the only thing I can think is, is when I'm doing dishes, the sinks are much higher than my original house two houses ago. And I think the shirt rubs against the belt buckle of my pants. So I've been doing that popular thing where you kind of tuck your shirt into your pants when I do dishes, if I remember. I'm hoping this isn't one of my new shirts. But anyway, I like a lot of color. And I always try to pick something not too bright when I do videos. But I decided that's my problem, my headspace problem. So I want to put something nice and bright on today. And I wore that neon pink shirt in one of the Whip It Wednesdays. So I'm like, great. All right, hello to Carol. Oh, thanks, Giovanna. Hi, Sandy. And I wanted to say hi to everyone that comes in 
and I miss seeing your comment because I'm crazy like that. I'm only one person. And hello to everyone that likes to just have me on in the background listening to me. And hello to everyone on the replay. Now remember, this is a live stream. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to cough and sniffle a little because of this dumb allergy thing going on. My hands, I'm wearing jeans today. I didn't want to put on a sweater because the studio light, when I put it on, warms me up, plus the iron. But my fingers are freezing cold. Not, yeah, right. I'm living with my children still. And yes, I could leave the dishes and they would do them eventually or put them in the dishwasher. But you know what? I can't. I like to have everything nice and clean when I go to bed at night. And I say go to bed at night when I have my dinner and I come out between five or six and I have to make sure all the dishes are done. I close all the blinds, turn off the lights, and I come in my room and I watch TV, knit, might take a late night nap or something. I want to make sure everything in the house is all set up and situated. And then whatever the boys do, you know, that's on them. I always wake up to din uh, dishes because they eat dinner late. And I don't mind, but my responsibility is done for the day and I don't have to worry about it. So I've gone ahead and I ironed on the white strip down the center. I think I did, yes, 10 of these blocks to go with however many I made before, like nine or eight or whatever. So I put five going left to right and five going right to left. So that way we're all set up the tutorial or whatever you might want to call it. I don't know if it was a real tutorial or just to hang out with me was on yesterday's. I'll see if I can go back and remember after the live stream to link everything. YouTube actually got smart and for the last couple of live streams, they were really good. And that little hearts that kept popping up in the chat, instead of doing weird things, it's right there when I set up the live stream so I can turn it off and it's great. Thank you, Giovanna. So that way I can go ahead and um, get rid of those hearts because I always like to read the first comment, the last one, the newest one that's coming up. And when there's a heart there, I can't see it. And not everyone leaves another comment, so that last one might be stuck there for a little bit. Yeah, the, the sink has to be clean. The counters have to be sprayed down. Coming from Florida with palmetto bugs, and I found out that Arizona has has water bugs they're basically like roaches with big long skinny legs and stuff so we did see one when we moved in here i haven't seen another which means nothing they could just be living in the walls somewhere but once it warms up as it's warming up i've been noticing different creatures and bugs coming out like i don't even know what they are they're little tiny things that might be coming through when we open and close doors or something like that Yes, that heart is annoying, isn't it? Even when you guys are just trying to read the comments yourself. But yeah, so I went ahead and, oh, what am I doing? Oh, you'll have to pardon me today. I am so scattered brain. I am sleeping really well, but I'm waking up in kind of discomfort pain and it's really messing with my brain. Plus, oh, look, I have two bins here. Oh, this is my scraps, okay. So <laughs> I'm kind of just a little scattered brain lately. Here are all of my fun strings. I'm going to make a total mess. And if you've been here for a while, you know I don't like to do this, but I find that this is the best way for me to do strings is to just dump it out. And that way I can pick, oh, not those. These are all the ones that need to go back into the Ziploc baggie because I want to save these for something fun for me. I kind of want to save that one too. And I want that one. And then, I mean, it's a quilt for me anyway, but I kind of want these to be, where did I put that? Oh, where did I put that? You guys have them days. Where did I put? There it is. I have stuff behind me, stuff next to me, stuff behind you. Oh, that's good. You don't want to have bugs. I haven't seen scorpions here yet. You know, knock on wood. This table's real wood, so I can knock on it. But we haven't seen scorpions yet, but I've been trying to get in the habit of checking my shoes before I put them on as a just-in-case, because it's a good habit anyways. I lived in an apartment one time, and the roaches there were pretty bad because it was one of those kind of apartments in a really not-the-best neighborhood. And... <laughs> Had to get in the habit of checking your shoes because 
I went to work and I worked for several hours and then all of a sudden I felt something tickling my toes. Hi, Sunny. I took my shoes off and it was a giant palmetto bug that had been in my shoe for numerous hours. So then I got into the habit of doing it. But I got out because the last place when I lived there for over 20 years, you know, while we had bugs and stuff just like everyone else does, I kept it up pretty well and took care of things. All right, so I am ready. I already have half and half, so I think I'm just gonna sew on this half. Because remember for this with the rectangles, if you want the design to go like this in a lattice, then you have to make your half and half. You have to have mirror images. Now, if you want them all to just go like this, then you can do whatever you want. Yeah, that was kind of freaky, Giovanna. I was like, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. So let's see, well, let's play with some greens. Let's take, this is not a green that I like, but when you mix it in with everything else, it's going to be fine. See there, now you can see my nice neon green shirt. We'll work with green fabrics. Keep everything out of the way. I went down to a 1.6 stitch length. I would go to a 1.5, but my machine only does even numbers and not odd numbers. So I'm good. If you hear my tummy rumble, I'm sorry. I did. I had yogurt for breakfast with some granola, but apparently I must be hungry today. Excuse me. And my tummy's been grumbling. I had some pretzels to hold me off, but it's like, Robin, it's 11 o'clock. I want lunch. So that, I'll just do that. I have my handy dandies. I've been using these titanium purple and green. If you want to find these scissors, you can Google, Google, go to Amazon and search on Amazon for purple and green scissors and these pop up. They don't, I mean, it says titanium on it, but I don't think that's the actual name. It's just maybe that they're titanium scissors. I don't know. But when I look for purple and green, it shows up. And I've been using, there's a, a short, scissor, a, a medium scissor, and a super long scissors. And I really kind of been using these a lot. They're just a nice, good scissors. They're not like super sharp or anything like that. But sometimes the really good Kai scissors and stuff, they don't, they're, they're too sharp for me when I'm doing certain things and it bothers me. Oh, the daddy long leg spiders, yeah. I, I like to keep, hi Sue, I like to keep, we keep the spiders. The rules in this, in our lives is the spiders can stay in the house as long as I can't see you when I'm laying in bed. If I can see you when I'm laying in bed at night, then I'm sorry, Mr. Spider, you have to go. I think that's one of the reasons we didn't have too much of a problem at my old house in Cape Coral, because Rob, my husband and I, we let the spiders live there. We didn't mess with them. Oops. Got so off the edge. I don't like spiders. Robbie hates spiders, but ooh, that one's too short in the extra bin. But we um, we allow them to do their thing because they're good. But just I don't want to see you. Oh yeah, you guys are having sunshine. I, I'm I'm used to being in Florida where we have all the sunshine, and you know it's been in the 80s there for a while. But here I'm like I'm cold. We had a couple of warm days, but then it's been cold again. It was 45 this morning. I'm like really, I'm not used to this. I'll get used to it for next winter. It'll be fine. I'll have better winter clothes because. We didn't come with like winter clothes because Florida, you only have a week total. That's, you know, sometimes it's spread out. I know I sound like I'm whining and I'm kind of whining in a nice quiet way, but oh my goodness, it's cold weather. And it takes so long. In Florida, when it's cold, it warms up by like 9, 10 in the morning as soon as the sun comes out. Here, it doesn't warm up until like 3 in the afternoon, and then by 4 or 5 o'clock, it's cold again. I'm like, okay. I spent a lot of time, and of course, the house is cooler than outside, which is great. I'm not complaining. I'm not at all. But I spent a lot of time putting on jeans and then putting on shorts, putting on a flannel shirt, then going with just a T-shirt. I'm like, I'm not used to this layered thing. And I go out and I see the Arizona natives and they're just like in shorts. And I'm like, okay. 
I'm that crazy Florida person that can't handle <laughs> the cold, I guess. Oh, no. Oh, no, Jody. Spider is in your bra hammock. That is just crazy. I like the term bra hammock. Oh, yeah, the dragonflies. A lot of people don't like dragonflies. There are what we call skeeter hawks. They kind of look like a dragonfly, but they eat mosquitoes. I don't know what they are here if it's the same species. I don't even know if they have mosquitoes here. I haven't, it hasn't warmed up enough to see. But I saw one and I'm like, go outside, go outside. Hi, Becky. I'm like, go outside. We don't want, I don't want to kill you because if you're doing something good and eating something. I saw my little buddy, the lizard, up on the cement wall in the backyard. He popped up a couple times, and then it got cold, so he's gone again. All right, I did purples and greens, and, ooh, how about a red? Ooh, nope, nope. Let's do this yellow-orange. I'm not, not really a fan of this yellow-orange, but I'm going to use it because it's part of the package. And it goes with everything. And it, look how long. I just love a nice long jelly roll strip. Had to buy a hooded blanket to keep warm, yeah. It's just like crazy. Yeah, in Florida, there was no way around standing water because it's a tropical area. You had to make sure, you know, you didn't give extra standing water, but if it rained in the summer, we always had the ditches, the culverts and stuff that gathered it. Now here, we had a couple of rainy days a week or so ago, and I'm like, oh wow, look, there's standing water, because for those of you in Arizona, of course you'll know, and maybe in other areas it's the same way, but we didn't have this specifically in Florida. In the Florida roads, you would have the road, and then you'd have ditches or culverts on the side, and they could be 10, 15 feet deep, and that's where all the rainwater went throughout the summer because, you know, we can get eight inches of rain on a summer day, and it's nothing. That's normal. But here, they have the road and then it goes down into all these rock paths and stuff and people walk on them and everything like that but there's tons of rocks and there's even like playgrounds and stuff and they're probably five six seven feet below the road because it's a big swell of a deep ditch there and it's really wide you know 20 30 feet wide or whatever and then when it rains it fills with water and i say fill like it could be you know five six inches deep or something and then it all just slowly drains away through the rock and stuff. So it was really interesting to see. The kids and I were like, oh, look, there's, there's, there's standing water. There's standing water. Because I didn't think we got enough rain for it to do that. But I guess since the ground is so hard that, of course, the rain can't, the water can't get absorbed into ground quick enough. Ladybugs, yes, they do like to eat things, don't they? But I've been looking at, I'm going to go up to Goodwill and check too, but I've been watching Walmart, Target, Kohl's, checking out their clearance for their winter stuff. So I've been looking for long sleeve t-shirts. I know the Gildan or whatever that I like to wear, they have long sleeve shirts. So I'll check them too and stuff like that. Just watch for deals. I'm not going to find those for $2.50. They usually go down to like $5.00 at Joann's and Michael's and things. So I'll just get a bunch of long sleeve shirts. Cause some days it's like, if I just had a long sleeve shirt, I wouldn't have to put on a little cardigan type thing. But moving around with the lights and talking and then having the iron on and stuff, it really does heat up the room nicely. In Florida, I was like, hey, it's getting a little warm in here from the lights. I don't like it. I need the AC. And here I'm like, let's warm it up. I need some extra heat. But with a south facing house, and my, my room faces the north. I'm going to cut this so that, you know, it, it doesn't get a lot of sun here. Water won't stand around for long. That's what I was thinking. Uh, we had, because everyone's like, okay, you know, you've got to go ahead and spray for weeds and all of this stuff. And I'm like, dude, it's a rental. I'm not really that worried about it. We don't have a lot. I hit used a weed eater out front. There's some weeds in the back and stuff. But Justin, after it rained, Justin went out and pulled some of the taller weeds. It's like, we're not really 
particular about it. I tried pulling it before it rained. You know, the ground was too dry and too hard to pull it. So as summer gets going and we get more, because I'm like, I refuse to go outside and pull weeds when it's 65 out. I'm just not going to do it. I have a whole bunch of, well, I have a whole bunch. What do I have? I have two or three flannel shirts. I have, Rob had this really big, thick um, Giants jacket. Now, as I said, I wear a size large. I get extra large because I like it to be, you know, nice and baggy and stuff, but his jacket is a 3XL. So that covers, it covers my hands and a few inches past it, probably like eight inches past. And then it goes down to like my knees. So I stay nice and warm with it. Hi, Kathy. I'm glad you can join us. Cotton jersey and then have a plush jacket over that. It'll keep you warm. Yeah, so like going outside, I have things to wear outside. I have like denim jackets and the hoodies and I've got like a rain jacket. I kept a lot of Rob stuff because we spent a lot of money on it and they weren't that old. And in Florida, we didn't wear them that much. But he's also got a New York Giants because it was his favorite football team. A, a windbreaker rain jacket. Oh, I love that. Because again, it goes down to my knees and it's a 3X. <laughs> So it's definitely great to go out on a rainy day because it covers you really well. So I'll just build up. I have like thin socks that are only ankle socks. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and I will, I will build up my supply of winter stuff over the summer. All right, it's time for a drink. Check out my new mug here that I received in the mail recently. It's got these holographic type scissors and stuff. So as you turn it around, the scissors change color. Robbie and I were laughing at it because I'm like, I don't know why they call this a rainbow mug. All of the scissors are black. So I was looking at it straight on here. I'm like, they're all black. So it's got this band at the top that's a little rainbow. I'm like, well, maybe that's why they call it. But I don't know why it's rainbow scissors. And then Robbie got up to it. And he's like, I put it on the counter to get a refill. And Robbie's like, I look at it one way, it's green. And I look at it the other way, and it's gold. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, oh, cool. Because I only saw it from one direction. But it's a 40 ouncer. I make, I do what I call Kool Aid pitchers, two quart plastic pitchers. We used to put Kool Aid in it when the kids were little. And I take two of those little drink pouches and I put it in there to flavor my water. So it's not really strong. It's just a hint of flavor. And this bad boy takes like half of, half of a Kool-Aid pitcher to fill up. I tested it out the other night. This is the second time using it. And it holds the ice pretty well. Now, this isn't an actual Stanley. It's one of those uh, copycat ones. So it's a less expensive. And it was created by... Oh, it's a YouTuber. Her name is Lauren, I believe. And I want to say her last name starts with an M. She makes a whole bunch of purses and zipper pouches and stuff. I used to follow her a lot. If anyone wants to know, let me know and I'll pop up the name later on when I go and search it. Moran Moreno or something like that. I'm, I'm probably just hacking it up and it's wrong. But she has these and stuff. So this is really cool. And you can drink through it or put a straw in it. So, okay. Big old drink. It, the thing is, is though, it's really, really heavy and it's great for putting in the car, but I have to be careful when I pick it up. I try to either put my hand through it like this, or I just carefully grab the handle on the bottom because when it's full, Lauren Mosimo, thank you, Sandy. I knew someone would know. I, I had the end part right. You keep your house at 71 all the time? Oh. Yeah, see, you guys know, you know, when we talk about YouTubers, there's always someone else that knows who we're talking about. Okay, I still didn't get a drink. <clears throat> so I try to drink. I, my goal is to drink at least a gallon a day. So I try to go to like five quarts versus four quarts, which is a gallon. Excuse me for a second. <clears throat> oh. I had all the allergy shots in Florida, so I was good in Florida. I, I don't have I don't have an immunity here for it yet. I gotta get used to everything. Plus my asthma doesn't like my lungs don't like cold cold stuff. So like when the weather gets cold or I eat ice cream and stuff. Oh, keeping it at a certain temperature like that. Justin likes to keep the temperature. And when we were in Florida, he had it at 76. 
We're not sure what we're gonna do here yet. They have the windows are tinted and they have the plastic blinds on all of them. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough to keep the electric bill low, but I will get some of the heat and sun blocking curtains if that's what we need to do. And then of course in my room here, I'll put a quilt up or something like that and see, or I'll put extra tinting on the windows. At my house in Florida, I used the limousine tinting because that house was facing the wrong way and it always got hot. Hi, Laura. Yeah, lots of layers. Thanks, Sandy. Hello to the other Laura. Laura, oh, I get close to make sure I get it right. Laura Ruthruff. Oh, that one was hard. Sorry, Laura. And then Laura Sup. And Linda from Texas. Hello, hello. Boy, I, I'm never going to forget Texas now. That was a long state to drive through, but it was a really pretty state. And those mountains and the, the valleys and the ups and downs, that was a trip. Robbie and I, we were talking when we were here in, I think we were in Arizona when we got to it, or maybe in a state before, but there was one mountain we were coming at it, and Robbie's like, Mom, we're going to have to go up that mountain. I'm like, no, no, everyone else cuts through the mountain. We're going to be good. We're going to cut through. He's like, Mom, I can see them spiraling up. It was a really great thing. It was only three miles. It still was a little tough on the cars. All the cars around us kind of slowed down. But we went around, and it was so gorgeous, and I was scared to death, but it was so cool. Thanks, Laura. Judy's from Georgia. Hello, hello. Now, Georgia has some nice mountains and clay areas. I went there years ago in high school. We went for a marching band competition, and there was some type of place where you went in and all the clay rocks and mountains were there, and they did a light show on it. That was beautiful, too. Like, oh, we're in Florida. Look at the hills and... Everyone, you know, other people we talked to, they were like, that's not hills. That's just a little bit of an incline. And we're like, no, no, it's a hill. It's Florida. And then we got going and we're like, oh, my goodness, this is worse. <laughs> this is not, well, that was not a hill. That was just a little incline. These are hills. These are mountains. But it's fun. Oh, everyone's saying hi, 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 hi. Water temp I aim for 68 day and a oh, winter temp, 68 day and night. Summer will be close to 78. I think I had the thermostat down to, I think I set it so the heat would kick on at 65, 66. It only, it only kicked on once and then I'd pop it on in the morning. I found that it was 79 in the house the other day and of course it wasn't the <clears throat> excuse me it was it was over 80 so it wasn't like the hottest day a summer of 125 or something but 79 was like oh okay this is kind of comfortable in here so let's go and see what happens we have APS electric and they said after we have it for three months they'll contact whoever the electrics is in their name and let them know they'll say hey you know we think you're on a good plan or we think based on your usage it'd be better if you went on this plan so we'll see we're on the plan where it's the same price all day long because we use the electric a lot everyone's cooking and using the stove between four and seven and stuff in the afternoon so Oh, snowy Wyoming. Oh, Joyce, I hope it warms up for you soon. I've always had sympathy for people, but now I think I have a little bit more empathy. <laughs> and even, you know, it's not that cold. 45 is not that big of a deal, but whew, 90 summer, 97 in the summer, 104. Yeah, some people got a really bad summer last year. I don't know what it's going to be like this year. I'm hoping it's better for everyone. Because last year was like record-breaking all around the world. My daughter's still out traveling. I talked to her yesterday on the phone versus just texting. You know, talking is easier. And she's going to be traveling 
her store, it's, it's got delayed again. So her store is not going to open until sometime early next year. So she's got to travel again. Hi, Charlotte from Central New York. Yeah, everyone, it was crazy. It was crazy in Florida. It was crazy here. Because I was watching to see what the summer temperatures were like. And I checked some of the winters. And I, whenever I checked it, it was the same in Florida. But I guess I didn't check the right days because it was different. All right, so now I'm going to turn these around. And I'm going to do the other side. Let's give them a little press. And I'll take them over and I'll iron them really nice after I have both sides done. It saves me from getting up and sitting down and getting up. Oh, yeah. People have to, like, I had to turn on the air conditioner. I haven't turned it on in years. Like you said, some people are like, I have to buy an air conditioner. Just been crazy. We usually turned ours, and now Florida, ours would have probably been turned on by now. They didn't have a 90 degree, last year they had 90 degree, their first 90 degree day in February. They haven't had a 90 degree day yet. I know next Thursday and Friday here, it's supposed to be 90 degrees, and Florida still won't have had one yet. They're not set into having one in May, which is really unusual. Now, Robbie's birthday is on the 8th. We usually try to get past his birthday and hopefully into May. But the last few years, we've had it turned on before his birthday, sometimes in March. No, nope, you're short. You can wait till later. You're short. You can wait till later. La, 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 la. Let's do, will you fit? Yep, you'll fit. I have ceiling fans. We have big ceiling fans. I have a five blade. Now, it's really weird. I think Robbie's bedroom, we have a four bedroom house. Robbie's bedroom is at the front. Now, either they considered it a den, but it does have a closet. I'm thinking the original people that built the house or bought the house wanted it for a kid's room with bunk beds. So he does not have a ceiling fan. So his room is the warmest. Justin's room is the one by the garage and his is the next warmest, which is across the hall from Robbie. Now, my room is freezing cold all the time. So we all, we're used to floors. So everyone has a ceiling fan but Robbie. There's one in the kitchen dining room, one in the living room, I think, maybe. But we all also enjoy the white noise and the movement of the air. So we all have, like, tabletop fans and floor fans. So we do all of that. Oh, hi, Robin's Quilt Basket. You're all right. We're just chattering away about the, the weather, of course. Because we're, oh, I thought I had two blocks together. Because we're all coming up to that time of year, and we don't know what it's going to be like based on last year's weather. But yeah, we all have ceiling fans. Now, I was laying in bed last, two nights ago, and I was looking up because right above my bed, which is over there against by the window, there's the big giant vent that has like six, it's like what you'd see in an office or a hospital or a business place. It's the big vents. And I was looking, and they have the set, there's, there's the little vents that come out this way, and underneath there's a vent that you can close or move the directions. They're all facing, blowing towards the window, and I thought that was weird. So I'm going to have to get on the ladder and get a pole or a stick or something and adjust it because I want the vent to hit the ceiling fan, and the ceiling fan will then make all the cold air move around. Oh, the pitch of the room. Yeah. Well, this room, it, you know, the ceiling fan's awfully high here. The kids' rooms aren't, they don't have the big vaulted ceiling like this bedroom does. So I think, you know, heat rises and stuff. So we'll see what happens. I also want to get another one of those, either the five finger lights or just a light on a pole thing. Because all of these yellow lights, they, there's... Well, there's four of them, and I only have one over my table, so I'd like to get a light and just stick it over in the corner just for sewing, so that way when I'm, like, sewing at night or in the early morning, late afternoon or whatever, I don't need to have all the lights on because the cats are all like, oh, it's so bright in here, Mom, but it does nothing to help me when I'm sewing. 
Yeah, we're in that weird weather right now. Yesterday was 75, today it's snowing. Yeah, it's that weird season where people, the weather doesn't know what it's doing. People aren't sure. The the trees and stuff, you know, they don't know. Are they going to, are they going to bloom? Are they not? You know, what are the flowers going to do? And unfortunately, this is a time of year when you lose stuff. I haven't planted anything. Because, again, I, re I refuse to work outside in the yard when it's below 70. I'm like, it's going to get warm enough soon enough. Anyway, I have the marigolds and the zinnia seeds. The ones from the Dollar Tree I usually have pretty good luck with. But maybe just because I was in Florida and almost anything will grow in Florida. You know, with all that rain and everything. So we'll see if it grows here. And if it doesn't, I've only wasted a couple bucks. That way, when I look out my window, I want to plant them against the wall. So when I look out my window, then I can go ahead and, you know, see some color and see some flowers. I was thinking when I had to drive to Walgreens twice yesterday to fill my prescription and to pick them up. Oh, you're short. I was thinking, um, I realized, oh, will you fit? Mm, nope. I'm like, why is everything brown? Why is everything brown? Well, the HOAs here have all kinds of rules, and you're not allowed to paint your house without HOA permission. There's like HOAs, and then there's like communities, and everyone has their own rules. So I'm like, I bet you that's why all the houses are brown, because the HOAs like everyone to look the same, and you can't have another color. Oh, Gisela, I'm sorry, I didn't see, well, you only said hi just a little bit ago, and we were all chatting. I'm sorry, but if, if you feel you need to leave, then that's okay, but I hope you stay. And sometimes it takes people a bit to see the hellos, whether their internet's slow, or a lot of people are sewing while we're chatting, so it takes a second or a minute for people to look up. So sometime in a live stream, or if the chat gets busy, people don't always see it, but hello. If you'd like to let us know where you live or what you're sewing on. Otherwise, you know, enjoy your weekend and maybe we'll see you next time. Excuse my sniffles. All right, let's put something bright on this one here. Oh, you're from Italy. I think we have a couple people on the channel that watch that are from Italy, if I remember correctly. You want to chime in and let us know what the temperature is there? Jody's from Seattle. Oh, I hope anyone who's in the East Coast up there with that earthquake is doing okay. Boy, I watched a couple people, they were doing things during live streams, whether it was crafty or not. Once you start looking at videos from the, the earthquake, you know, YouTube gives you all of them. And it was like crazy. Everyone's like, wait, was that a big truck going by? Was that an earthquake? And then the aftershocks, they were saying, you know, the aftershocks are, you know, they're powerful enough, but it's more of a, a nerves, a stressful reaction. Yeah, Sunny's the same way. Sunny, I'm doing the same thing. So it's, this channel gets chatty, and then it gets quiet, and then we get chatty, and it just varies, which is fine. Uh, I'm in a chatty mood today, apparently, so, oh, can I get it? Can I, oh, let go. Can I, can I, huh? Oh, look at I can. I'm like, I want the orange. Orange goes next to green. I want to thank everyone that's been sending community blocks. I've decided that I'm going to, oh, fabric postcards. Hold on a second. I've got to let you guys just hang out for a minute on your own. Go and use the restroom. Grab a quick drink. 45 seconds. I want to show you something. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Never 
fails. Let's see what happens when I don't organize and get prepared. I was going through picking out fabric postcards to send to the people who sent the community blocks to thank them for sending me a block, for paying for the shipping, you know, taking the time and all of that. And I found these three fabric postcards that I have left. Well, these are ones that are already ready to go out, but people were supposed to send me their mailing address for them and they didn't. These are the ones that have, I don't know if you can see, they have that netting over the top, so it kind of changes up the look of the fabric a little bit. So I have three of these fabric postcards. I can send them anywhere, anywhere in the world. So if any three people would like these, let me know. All you have to do is send me your mailing address to my rsislandcrafts at gmail.com address. Excuse me, and I'd love to send them to you. Oh, someone's from Sweden. Giovanna's from Sweden, duh. Wait, Gisela, you're from Sweden? I thought you were from Italy. Giovanna, have you got... Giovanna, did I send you one and it actually made it to you, right? Michigan. Oh, and Michigan's having a nice day. What size community blocks? No, I'm saying I would like the 6-inch blocks that I did in the community video, but really anything like 10 inches and smaller is fine. Caroline's Mercantile. I didn't see Caroline's Mercantile. Let me go back, see what happens when I leave the room. I think gray on top and black to match the backing fabrics, but straight liner curves. Hmm. Oh, black and white cat quilt. What kind of blocks are you making? What state am I in? Oh, hi, Judy. I am in Arizona. Uh, Taiwan. I saw something about Taiwan. People are like, was it in New York? Was it in Taiwan? Everyone was so confused because they both had them. But wasn't the Taiwan one, like, that one was like a serious one that caused issues over there. I am in Surprise, Arizona. Everyone knows I'm in Surprise, Arizona. I have a P.O. box down below. I don't give out my actual address. I'm just playing catch up. Grand top and black to match. Oh, a thread color you're looking at. Yeah. Um, I take my thread spool, whatever one I'm looking at, and this has been like a lot of quilters talk about it, and you just take your, you lay your blocks out. I'm cross-stitching. Oh, nice. So let me catch back up to where we are. Thank you, Laura. I love everyone's blocks. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I misplaced my note on the size. Okay, yeah, I would prefer the like the six, six and a half inch one or whatever it is. It finishes that. I think it's six inches. But any size will work because I'm going to put little pieces in between to make sure everyone's who works. A three-yard quilt pattern. Okay, Sue, you use the three-yard quilt pattern a lot, don't you? Okay, so as long as the postcards can get to Giovanna or send Gisela a postcard. I have three of them. So if you guys want to send me your mailing address, I will send it to you. And make sure you put your country down too, because you guys know how it is. We need to know the country. You're in Gilbert. My mother used to live in Gilbert years and years ago. So I, that name I'm familiar with, I kind of know where it is. Yes, if you want to hand stitch some beads on it, that'll be fine. I'm able to go around it. If they're going to be in the center, right? So that makes it easy. If you feel like it would be hard for me to quilt around it, just take a picture with the beads laying on the block where you want them, email that to me, and then I'll hand stitch the beads on. But hand stitching the beads on shouldn't be a problem. Oh yeah, if you want, go ahead and put it in there and then everyone will let you, they'll give you your opinion. Tempe, sounds like a neat town. I was trying to figure out where you, oh yeah. I'm in surprise, everything is brown. <laughs> Hi, Susan. Yep, I'm glad you made it. Fast quilts is so... My address is down below in the description box. If you want one, I have three of them. If you, you have to, you know, even if you're not in the chat or whatever, or you're on the replay, let me know. But what you do is you take your whatever thread you're going to use and you spool it off 
and you let it sit on your quilt like this. You see my thread on there? And then you can look at how the thread works with all of your fabrics. Is the black too dark on the white? Is the white too dark on the black? Do you need a gray? And that'll help let you know. If you just put your spool down like that, you can't tell. Now, lighter threads tend to be more visible and darker threads tend to recede into the fabrics in a general speaking way. It could be different with each fabric. Now, a black thread on a white quilt is not gonna recede, you know what I mean? So that's what I like to do. I learned that from other quilters many, many moons ago and it's been very helpful. All right, back to this. Giselle, you don't want to put your address here in the chat. You might, can someone go ahead and delete that or Giselle, go ahead and delete that. You have to send it to me in email. It's not safe to put it in the chat like that. Sometimes my dark thread gets, oh, cause that's a tension issue, Jody. And don't ask me how to do tension. Cause you know, <laughs> I'm not good. I, I, I just kind of play with things. I'm like, I set my machine up, my Juki does everything automatically, and I just cross my fingers that it works. Oh, wow. Yeah, you really are. Hello, the crafty author. The email's down below in the description box, but it's rsislandcrafts at gmail.com. The mailing, well, well, I guess you wouldn't need my mailing address. Gee, I'm used to saying it's down there. <laughs> yeah, my P.O. box is down there too. But there's email addresses down there. There's one for PayPal, and then there's another one. The other one that's a Gmail is the best one. While I check my Hotmail, I don't check it regularly like I do my other one. All righty then. I don't know how many blocks will actually get made today, but we'll sell for a little bit, chat for a little bit until Robin's tummy says that's it. It's done grumbling. It had a drink. It's fine. This fabric really has a lot of thread shedding. All right. I am limited on my fabrics here, but you know, I really don't care if I have two blocks that look the same. And if you're running out of scraps, you can take two scraps, put them right sides together and either straight line them or diagonal them. And then you can go ahead and put that on there too. Cause if you're being scrappy, you know, I say go all the way. I think I might've wanted this one or is that the one I just did? Nope, I'll put it on here. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie, because there is no way you guys know me. I have to see your name a hundred times before I remember it. Thanks, Sue. Great, Caroline, well, they're gonna go over there and check it out now or later, and everyone, I'll pop in, I can't pop in now, of course, but I'll check in later. And then, hi, Joyce, I don't know if I said hi to you earlier, but again, my apologies if I miss someone because I can only read the chats, I can't hear the chats, because if I heard your chats in my head, I would go crazy, but I will pop up and look. And if everyone has a question, you can do at RS Island Crash. You can put all capitals and someone will tell me that I missed it and I can scroll back. Yeah, it's gonna be hot here, <clears throat> excuse me. But guys, it was hot in Florida. We're waiting and see to see how it is, but my daughter had friends that lived not far from me in Cape Coral, Florida. They've been here last summer. They moved in June and they're like, yeah, it's hot. But they said it was without the humidity, it's a lot easier than Florida. But in two, three years, we're going to be Arizona acclimated and it's probably going to be crazy hot too then. Your body gets used to the humidity or the no humidity. But when you wake up in the morning and it's 7 a.m. and it's 80 degrees and the humidity is sky high, 
Yeah, it's it, you know it's, it's one of those days. But it was just crazy this morning. I woke up and I'm like, I'm awfully cold. I'm like, hey, S-I-R-I, because I always ask. Mine's a guy on my phone. I'm always like, what's the temperature? And he's like, it's 45. I'm like, oh, my goodness. It was 71 in the house. And the 71 in an all-tiled house. I have a carpet in this room, thank goodness. But the tile floor gets awfully cold. It is. And... I have to do this lean in thing. I wonder if you guys can see, like, I'm leaning in. Are you seeing, like, my, my, my gray hairs and stuff? I'll bring you guys a little closer since you're already in the shot anyways. Ridgecrest, California, out in the desert. Yeah, see, that's I'm not used to this desert stuff. Oh, search and rescue. He's an amazing person. Search and rescue, they, they take so many chances to help those that are in need and are in a dire situation, and they're just amazing people. And just a little I see on TV is amazing. I can't even imagine how it is real. It's 47 degrees here. Yeah, it's cold, right? It's not 47. It's not 45 anymore because it's 20 minutes to 12, but I bet you it's not 70 degrees yet. Fort Dodge. Oh, I'm like... I know where Fort Dodge is. Nope, sorry, Sue. I know where you live. <laughs> All right, Gisela, have a good night. You can always come back and check the replay. We'll see you next time. Now, speaking of clothes and stuff, because that's what I was talking about, I don't have clothes for the winter. And you know what? I don't have clothes for the summer either. I have enough shirts now, but I don't have enough shorts. I have to see what's in my boxes that I kept in storage, but I have a feeling I need to go short shopping. Now, if I could lose a little bit, I have like 10 pairs of shorts that are one size less than I am right now. So if I can get moving around a bit and out in... Once it warms up, I, like I said, I don't, I'm not really motivated to do anything when it's cold. Once it warms up a little bit, I'll get out and and hold on. Someone left me a comment. I got to pop that off so I can see. Once it warms up, next year I'll get used to it and I'll probably do more walks in the winter. But right now I'm just waiting for it to warm up a little bit. Because I want to take, as I showed that cement wall instead of a fence around the house, there's one of those walking paths with all the rocks and stuff behind it. So I'd like to start walking on that a little bit. I know my broken down, not so broken down, but I have to be careful with what I choose to do with my body. I can do a half mile lap every other day and then do some, I like to do those YouTube videos where you... You could, you could walk right here in your house and they give you all these exercises to do right at home. I like to do those and those will help me get back into my, uh, you know, my fighting weight there, you know. So then I might not need to purchase as many, but I like to get some shorts and I like to get some type of winter clothes that aren't all jeans and stuff. So we'll see what happens. I'll see what I can find at Goodwill first. Yeah, without the humidity, even with the heat, you know, it might be like, whatever. Oh, Laura, you're amazing. I can't, the, the walking really messes with my neck. I, you know, it kind of makes sense. I can walk much farther than I used to be able to. I, when I lived with my kids, I walked a half mile to Walmart and a half mile back, but I can't do that every day. And I can't do it, but, you know, once or twice a week. So I just have to, if I want to sew, I have to take care of, you know, my body and not do the things that annoy it. But for those at-home exercises, I have the space now easily to do it in my room. I used to have to do it in the kitchen at the kid's house, which is fine because nobody was home or they were sleeping. But I have the room to do it here, and I could do that every day, and I just take Sundays off. So that's going to help me out a lot. Now, my son, Justin, you guys know, if you've been here for a while, he has um, the heart condition. He was, well, he's still in technically heart failure, but 
with all the new devices he's had put in. Now, he's, he's a hero to me. I mean, the things he did with the bad heart and now what he does, he likes to go out and walk and he'll walk, oh yeah, I walked five miles today or, or, you know, I walked six, seven miles or whatever. I'm like, you are amazing. Cause he, he lost all that weight. He had the, the weight loss surgery and stuff. So he lost all that weight and you know, he looks good and he, he just, he just keeps on plugging away. And he does a really good job. Me, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know, I know. But I, sometimes I think when you're forced to do things, you know, it, it sometimes it can be a little easier. But when you just have to do things, like my daughter with her traveling and not eating right, she's been working out in the gyms. She, she had her first really big leg day. She was doing, like, lunges and stuff. She's like, Mom. I have to take the elevator. I can't use the stairs at the hotel like I usually do because my legs are too sore. Oh, I can't even walk across the, the hotel room. Ow, oh, ow. Oh. I'm like, oh, you poor thing. I heard leg days were bad. Sweatpants are like pajamas, yeah. But sometimes I don't mind wearing the sweatpants. But if you wear them all winter and you're not paying attention to what you're eating, and I, I get on a scale every day. So my weight, if it goes up a pound, I'm like, okay, what's going on? Let me readjust. You know, I had some jelly beans, so I gained a couple pounds. And jelly beans are gone. So now we have to eat healthy again. So I know for me to lose the weight, it needs to be an exercise thing. Because for the most part, my eating is relatively good. I could get more vegetables, and that's my plan to have, you know, vegetables every day instead of, like, a big vegetable, roasted vegetables, and then, like, you don't eat anything vegetable for three days or something like that. So I know I need to work on that. But as I get older, I'm like, okay, as you get older, your body can start failing on you, so you need to be in your best shape possible. So if you do get sick... I just got to bring in the uh, pressing mat. So if you do get sick, you want to be really helpful, healthy, so that you can, you know, get through those illnesses better and get to the other side. So that's what I want to do. Yeah, see, Joyce, yeah, the, the walker and stuff. So there's a lot of exercise programs on YouTube that you can do sitting down. I have to be careful between the neck and the shoulder. Like, I can't do, um, what are all those, like, sitting dog exercises, the yoga? I can't do yoga because so much of it is the shoulders and the upper body, and my body just can't. I've had three surgeries on one shoulder, one on the other, and then the neck issues, I just can't, trying to bring the iron over, I just can't, you know, physically do that, so, but it would be nice, the, the whole thing of stretching, I do a lot of stretching that works for me, and different things like that, so you just adjust that works for you. There we go. Yeah, well, I mean, you don't have to walk, right? I also know that I need to get out into the sunshine more. So that's a thing because I take vitamin D because my levels are low. And then calcium because I'm allergic to milk and all that stuff. I'm just waiting to make sure. The iron, it has these lights that go around here to tell you when it's heated up. So when this ring stops ringing and it's solid, then my iron's heated up. Because, of course, I didn't remember to do it. Snow, oh no, and then it's gone. <laughs> I saved the rest of my dill pickle bag, Sue. It's sitting in the cabinet in a Ziploc bag because when my allergies were really bad, I could barely taste or smell anything, but I'm like, I kind of like the dill pickle jelly beans. It's crazy. Oh, in Florida, there you couldn't go to half of the pools. I mean, there wasn't like many community pools, and it was always crazy. 
Isn't it cute? I, I'm so happy that someone let me know that Missouri Star had the little mini ones. Otherwise, I'd still be waiting for it. It's so cute and adorable. I, <laughs> I laugh at myself. I'm like, Robin, you're crazy. Because sometimes I'll have both irons plugged in. Because sometimes you want the little one. And then when the blocks are finished, sometimes it's better to have the big one. So I, I, do, I do them both. I don't care. Right. I'm trying to do the... Yeah, Sue, so I kind of liked the dill pickle jelly beans. Not to have a lot, but just a few because it's a garlicky dill pickle like those pickles you get in restaurants at the delicatessen and stuff, the ones in the refrigerated section. It was really realistic. I'm like, oh, because it's not a jelly bean. It's like eating a pickle, a chewy pickle. So it was weird. Weird, but good. I mean, they could put bacon and everything. Why not have a little dill pickle? But yeah, I'm trying to remember that, first of all, you guys can't see me when I'm doing stuff. Like, if I want to wear, you know, shirts and shorts that don't match or something, and I'm just sitting at the house sewing, and I'm not doing a video, nobody's going to know, right? Who's going to know, like they always say on Instagram, who's going to know? If I have two irons going at the same time, nobody's going to know. Yes, it's plugged in, and yes, they're heated up, but sometimes it's... I'll use just one and then turn it off and use the other. And other times, depending on my project, I'll go back and forth from one to the other. And of course, as you can see, I'm a scrubber. I'm not a presser. I don't follow the rules because I was a rebel when I first taught myself quilting and I don't change. Coffee. Oh, Coffee Alley, hello, hello. I am making the rectangle string blocks from yesterday's tutorial here on my channel. And it's going to become a lap quilt for my new chair that I have in my new bedroom slash sewing space. And what am I getting stuck on? You know, sometimes you just gotta go from the back, whatever. But yeah, I, as I get older, <laughs> things are changing a little. And I knew by talking to my grandparents and stuff, as they got older, they got the what the heck attitude. I don't care. I'm going to do what I want. I've lived however many years. I just didn't realize 55 was going to be the year that I decided to do. I'm going to do whatever I want. I don't care what anyone thinks. I don't know if I'm early or I'm late, whatever. Yeah, I went through, not to be too personal, but I went through menopause early. I did that in my 40s. So I, maybe I'm just an old soul, and I'm like, I'll do whatever I want. Ah, these strings. It's like, why do I worry about what people think when people can't even see me to think it? You, oh, you're a lurker? <laughs> I have a lot of beginner projects in my earlier years. I think I've been on YouTube for like seven, eight, nine years now. I really think it might be, it'd be scary if it was like nine years. But I see I'm in Patreon now for this is my fifth year. So it's got to be at least seven years here on YouTube, if not longer. And I did a lot of beginning quilting stuff. At the early part of my channel, we made some quilts and some quilt blocks. So even though they're the older ones, people are still watching them. Oh, turn the iron. I'm going to turn the iron facing away from me because you know me, I'll touch a hot iron. All right, so this is where I'm at. I'm going to still keep going with this, but I also have my bucket of bits. I'm going to work on that. Oh, and I... All right, so we talked about that, and I talked about sending out postcards to everyone who has sent me a community block. If, after sending me a community block, one, if you don't see me, I only go to the post office whenever I get an Etsy order, or I go on Fridays or Mondays. So if you haven't seen your community block on Whip It Wednesday, or if it's not in the community tab, and it's not on the Patreon page, it's in a free section on Patreon, everyone can see it. I don't think you need to be signed in to see it. You might be able to just search me and find it. There's a link down below to my Patreon. Oh, that's not what I wanted in there. But so if you haven't seen it, let me know and I'll let you know. I'll look through my blocks and stuff. Send me a picture of it and I'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, because sometimes I just 
mess things up. You guys know it happens. So this will fit there. So I'll put that on. These are jelly rolls from 2009. So it would be nice to get more of them out of my stash. I can even put borders or, oh, I'm sorry, I yelled, put borders, or I can put the fabric on the back or something like that, use the strips for binding. There will be a lot of ways to use it up. Mm. Yeah, sometimes you just have to jump in, and if it comes out great, it comes out great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Oh, no, Giovanna, yep. Oldest video is seven years. Thanks, Jackie. So seven years. Like, I couldn't remember. I was looking at someone else's. They must have been nine years. So I'm going to put strips on one side, and I'll flip it around and do the other. And again, I just want to use up some of these. Like, these I can put at the corner. Let's see if I have some of the longer ones. I'm still trying not to. I'm only putting, what, four strips, six strips in each or whatever. I want to you know, not duplicate in the same block if I can help it. And then I'll go into the other strips if I need to in my, I don't want to use these. I still want to save them pile. Oh, wow, Judy, that had to have been hard. I was, I had a crazy, what are they, perimenopause, pet, perimenopause before you go through it. I had a crazy time for that, and then, of course, everything else, but it was super simple. I, I, I was very blessed. I mean, I don't know if you can go through it again or symptoms can pop up or something, but I, I was very lucky. My grandmother, I, I, I'm sure I told this story before, but my grandmother went through it a little bit early, too. I remember when I was in high school, um, we weren't allowed to go over to my grandparents. We used to go over all the time and spend weekends, but there was like one or two weeks where we weren't allowed to spend over because grandma's going through the change and she was having a hard time. So I was thinking, you know, whatever, when you're, when you're 14, 15, whatever years old I was, I'm like, oh, okay, she's going through the change. It's only going to take a weekend or two. Great, that can't be that bad. And I thought, oh, that's a little crazy Grandma's only going to go through the change for a weekend or two. I think someone was kind of telling us a story or something. You're 69 and do what you want. I don't blame you. Oh. You know, sometimes, Francine, the easiest thing to do is to purchase or cut some... Ch Cutting your own fabric into five inch charm squares is, can be difficult because you still have to choose fabric. But if you buy a charm pack or a couple charm packs, you can look on Pinterest for uh, quilts that use charm packs or just sew them up in patchwork. Just sew all your charm squares together, one or two packs, make a lap quilt or something, and then it's done. The scariest part is over. You didn't have to choose your fabric. You didn't have to choose a layout. You just got practice sewing all the pieces together and doing the actual quilt. And then you can even do straight line quilting and just not have to stress about it. Because sometimes that, that beginning, getting started when you're painting, cross-stitching, whatever, it can really kind of make you scared. I have messed up enough along the way. And, you know, I couldn't afford patterns. I couldn't always afford the fabric. So my very first quilt was made just by taking a CD case, tracing around it on all of our clothes that we no longer wore, dress shirts, the kids' clothes, and stuff like that. And that's how I made my first couple of quilts that way. And if it works, great. You know, if it's not, then you can always donate it. Menopause. I think being able to release a lot of stuff comes with menopause, too. When you get through it, you're like, okay, I'm good. You know, we get through it, it's over and done with. We survived it, and then we're like, whatever. And I want to put the pink next to the green because green's a little dark, and let's brighten it up. It was like, we survived. There's a lot of trials and tribulations that everyone has to survive in life at different times of their life. Some people do it when they're younger. Some people it happens when they're older. 
times sure are changing, aren't they? You know, in the morning for a little bit, I kind of feel old and creaky, but then, yeah, I feel better and everything, and the day gets going on, and I'm like, cool. But, you know, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, I'm not old. I mean, I feel old some days, but I know I'm not old. And I talk about being old, but sometimes that's just how you feel, and it's a state of mind. And some days we all kind of feel older than we are, but... I can still look back, and I'm not that old. That's where I was going. I'm not that old, and I can look back, and like the 80s, they sure were different now, weren't they? Where are you going, Morsey? Oh, it's noon. <laughs> the cats are star. I, I closed my door so my daughter's cats can't bother me. <laughs> oh, we have been having some fight and feud and cats between mine and mine and mine and theirs and theirs and theirs. Where are you going, Morsey? Did you want to go out? I let you out. I, oh hi! Oh hi, sweetie. Come on. Hold on. S'mores is the only one of my cats that like doesn't sleep through most of the night. So sometimes she wants to go out of the room at night, but lately she's been enjoying just having me close the door at night. I've been closing the door at night, and I can feel the stress levels in my room just kind of like settle down. I don't have to worry about my daughter's cats coming in and picking a fight. My cats don't have to worry about my daughter's cats coming in and picking a fight. And I, I thought it was just, you know, too many cats in the house, but my daughter's cats just love to fight. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Hi, Rose. I'm glad you could pop in and visit us for a little bit. Oh no, that is so hard, especially being in another, you know, another country, another state, another city. I, I've had that fear, like going on vacation and then something happened. I was so worried going from Florida to here that there might have been an issue where someone might have had an, you know, an accident or cars broken down. Mentally, I like planned for everything I could possibly think of. Like, how are we going to handle this? How are we going to handle that? What will we do? My kids laughed because my son had, his car had problems coming here. He actually had to put it in the shop and get his transmission worked on. There was like chunks of metal came out and it was sitting in the transmission pan or oil pan or wherever they were doing it. And I'm like, we had to, luckily it was the last day and we could just carefully get here and then he could get it in the shop and get it looked at and fixed. That took like two weeks to get it fixed. But we're like, okay, what are we going to do if this happens? I, I had planned for all that because my daughter's car is old. Mine's a 2015, but it doesn't have a lot of mileage on it. My car is a 2015, and I think I haven't even hit 70,000 miles. Hi, sweetie. Do you want lunch? Hi, baby. What's going on? You want Mama to get you something to eat? Everyone's used to you eating lunch. So let me, let me just hold on, guys. I have to feed the baby. The baby, finally, I think she's been, you know, knock on wood, I, she's been doing pretty well, and I think she's been like seven pounds for a while now. She was stuck at five pounds for the longest time, and she's eight years old. There you go, sweetie. Is that what you want? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We won't bother you. So I'm glad she, whenever she wants to eat s'mores, I always feed her because, and she only eats, my girls don't eat a lot. They only eat small amounts, but they like to graze throughout the day. Just reading comments, catching up on everyone. Apologies when I miss things. Feel free to send me an email if there was something you wanted to have answered that the girls didn't help you answer. Or I think we have a couple of gentlemen that watched the videos. Or if you needed help with something. Or you just want to yell at me, hey, Robin. Hey, Robin, I talked to you seven times and you never answered me. I, I know someone would have yelled at me before then. There would have been like six comments going, Robin. Someone's trying to talk to you. But on the replay, you can leave questions down in the comments. We'll, 
other people come back and I always check the comments, of course. As of going live, I only had one comment left on YouTube that I needed to respond to. And Becky, I'm pretty sure it's yours. So I'm really patting myself on the back here because I did pretty good. Oh, that's hard. And you know, you get to, that's why, 100% why I moved here with my kids. Well, partially because we all know my house was falling apart, especially after the hurricane. And two, as I'm getting older, I didn't want to be in Florida by myself because if something happens, you know, who's going to take care of you? And then like something happens in another country and you're in an accident and you can't walk. I mean, that's just, it's financially hard. It's emotionally hard. And it's just a struggle. Like, what are you going to do? What am I going to do now? You know, it's, it's hard. It is hard. Oh, I have a lot of greens left. I like greens. I just don't really care much for the darker greens. You have to start planning for stuff like that. I've already, like, I tell my kids, okay, here's all my passwords. This is where I keep them hidden. If this happens and that happens, you know, do this and that. My grandfather always told us, he's like, if something happens to me, empty out my bank account before you call 911. If you know I'm dying and there's no help for me, they're like, because he was old school and stuff, you know, always worried about, you know, the government getting his money and stuff. He's like, empty my bank account, then call 911. I'm like, okay, Gramps, we got you. I tell my kids the same thing. If something happens to me, go ahead and empty my bank account. Call 911. One of you call 911 and one of you empty my... Oh, I hope I didn't make anyone call 911. Bye, Sunny. Bye, Joyce, where everyone's leaving. Bye. Yeah, because, you know... Because you don't have access to it. And even if you have a will and stuff, there's like probate and everything like that. And I tell my kids, I said, empty my bank account. If I'm still alive, you can just give it back to me. Don't spend it. Just, you know, empty my bank account. And then we'll figure it out afterwards. Because they're going to need the money to do things. I, as I'm getting older, I know I want to I wanna be cremated. I know that. Boy, we've really taken a turn today. We've talked about everything from the weather to accidents to dying and clothes. We hit it all. When I get rambly, you never know. But I know I need, as I'm getting older, I need to set up life insurance and I need to see about prepaying for my cremation and stuff like that to make sure that there's no stress on my daughter because she would be the one that has to handle everything. She's like, I don't know how you did it after dad because... You know, I, I wouldn't know what to do. And my kids were always surprised because Rob liked to, he had a lot of, uh, let, let me see how I can put this. Well, Rob liked to yell and scream and fight a lot. He didn't know how to talk about his feelings. So the only way he could handle it was to get drunk and then scream and yell. And I'd let him scream and yell for a little bit. And then I'm like, okay, what's really bothering you? Then he'd tell me and then we'd get it all straightened out. But when we were younger and stuff, I made him talk. I'm like, okay, what do you want to do when you die? What do you want, you know, what do you want this to happen? How do you see us in this many years and stuff like that? Because you have to have those conversations. And my kids aren't in those kind of relationships yet, so they haven't had those. Oh, I didn't, so whatever. I didn't sew down the other side. Oh, yeah, one of these cutters. Yeah, these are great. It's from Gypsy Rose, but you can get them on Amazon and stuff like that. This is a, if you go into Amazon and you search for purple thread cutter for quilting or something, this will pop up. I don't know the exact name. I do have a video tutorial for it. If you can't find it on Amazon or just by Googling, I just search for purple flower thread cutter and it pops up. There's a variety of them. But this one, there's two different ones now. Someone sent it to me. It's, this one has a 60-inch rotary cutter blade in it. So you take an old dull one, and you put your rotary cutter blade in it. And in between all of these pedals, I can just keep turning it, and there's always going to be a blade sharp enough. There is a 45-millimeter size one now available. I think they're great. And then it just sits in there, and it comes apart and stuff like that. And I like that it has the little, 
matching flower on the inside. But I, when I couldn't find this, when we moved and got here and unpacked stuff, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to cut all of these threads. What am I going to do? There we go. But yeah, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Bye, Becky. I'm glad everyone can hang out with us today. I think the cord with the big iron is longer than the cord for the small iron. And it, I think it's great that you can change the cord back and forth. And I saw a post on Instagram that, hold on, has this little neat little trivet so I can go like that. I saw a post on Instagram yesterday that they're starting in the UK now. They have, they have, um, these little irons. I don't think they have the big one, but they have not the Tula Pink, but the other little, they're called Project Irons from Aliso. They have those that are going into the UK with the special UK cord you guys need and plug and stuff. Yeah, I, I haven't had this one for very long, so you haven't seen it in videos very much. I think I had it probably for the last live stream. I, I would imagine, I don't remember. Blade Saver Thread Cutter from a Gypsy. Yep, because Gypsy Quilter has a lot of fun quilting tools that you didn't think you needed, but, you know. it's We don't need certain things, but it sure does make life easier. Like a rotary cutter and the rulers, they make life a lot easier, but we could do things without it. You need a hutza? <laughs> Is that when everyone comes over and helps you sew and quilt and stuff? As soon as I got here, I had an invitation. It was one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about. I had an invitation to go to a quilt shop. They do a sew, a sew day or whatever. I don't know what, remember what they call it, once a month. But I was too sick to do it. I mean, it was my allergies, so I wasn't, like, contagious. But you don't want to go and meet new people and, you know, cough and sneeze and sound, sound really bad when you're meeting these new quilting people and stuff. So... I, I kept it to myself, and I don't know if I'll make it for April, but I'm really hoping I can get there in May and hang out with people and just sew for a day. I think I might start a hand sewing project so I don't have to take my sewing machine and stuff with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. It's nice to see people, we all go through, you guys see me sewing all the time and doing things because that's my job, but there are times too where I tell you, you know, my, hi, Morsey's sleeping in my chair. Uh, my mojo goes, you know, I got, I have this one that should be long enough. And I think that, oh, and a blue one. And it just, it goes. So I pick projects like this, or I just organize my scraps just whatever it is, whether it's quilting or it's so, uh, not sewing's the same, Robin, or it's like knitting and crochet, I just try to still touch whatever it is that I'm working on. If I'm doing quilting, I touch the fabric. If I'm doing crochet and knitting, I touch the yarn. I just try to stay connected to it so that when my, it, I find for me, if I step away from it and my mojo, my crafty mojo goes, I found that it stays away longer if I don't get crafty, if I stay away from the crafty stuff. But if I keep touching it, something will inspire me and get me excited. It might take two weeks, it might take two months, but there's usually something. Moving, the whole moving process, you guys have been so patient with me and I don't even know if everyone noticed but the whole moving process has been so stressful. It killed all my creativity. But I have so much creativity here that I'm like, I'm now I'm overwhelmed. Oh, can you see? <laughs> yeah, it's the little iron's got a headlight. There you go. There's a little headlight on it. Where the big iron water shoots out of this, this iron has a headlight. It's so cute. And here's the, the lights to let you know 
that you can go ahead and use the steam. And this one, I can pause the iron and it has a red light and then I can bring it back on. I don't think I did, I don't remember, but I don't think I did an unboxing for the baby iron. And it says tulip pink there. It doesn't say don't feed the fish and there's no fish on the water tank or anything. This one, the newer ones, if you have one of their older ones, Tula Pink was saying the handle gets really hot, but I can touch, I can touch this whole gray area, excuse me, <clears throat> and it doesn't get hot. So I guess that's a new feature and everyone's really excited for it. So I thought that was great. Well, you know, I'm happy. It doesn't bother me, but I think we're gonna, if everyone wants to keep hanging out, we'll just keep sewing for a little bit more. And maybe we'll make it to the point where we trim these blocks up. You never know. So all the measurements are in the other video, but I have them written down. My paper is cut 7 by 10. You can cut rectangles any way you want in whatever proportion you want. And my blocks are going to go 6.5 by 9.5. So I like to go a half inch bigger on both numbers just to give me some room for trimming down. In case I did a little oops along the way, I want to make sure I have everything to go. Right? All the bowl cozies are in the shop. <laughs> Some of them have sold already. Thank you so much. Um, let me, let's have a little talk. Since we're talking bowl cozies, let me give you my opinion now. I've decided that my wrap and zap I don't know why I thought this was something special. It's 100% cotton batting. It's from Pellon. I usually use uh, the Warm Company. This batting is thick, like thick. I'm going to use this for pillows now because I only paid $5 for the package, $4.99, free shipping with Amazon because I have Prime. But oh my goodness. It is super thick. It made it very difficult for the bowl cozies. Someone sent me from the Gypsy Quilter, the same one that this, they gave me um, a, a bundle of batting with the rounded. It's already cut out. The darts are cut out and it's got rounded corners. It's like a pack of five or six batting pieces. And I was looking at those when I was cleaning the closet and they're super thin. And I'm used to using thin cotton batting and I'm like, you know what? I'm not making bowl cozies with that anymore because it is way too thick. It's therapy, 100% Laura. I, I say all the time, when I sit down, I just hold my knitting or just hold my knitting bag. It feeds my soul. It calms my soul. I don't even have to knit. I just have to hold the project, project bag unopened in my hands and I feel better. What type of batting do you use in your zipper bags? I have a pattern that calls for soft and stable. Um, so some people use soft and stable. You know what I do? For my zipper pouches, my coin pouches and zipper pouches, that's just one fabric, I use fusible fleece. I like the pouches that are kind of squishy and aren't stiff, so I just use that. And if I want it a little stiffer, I can put some lightweight interfacing on it. And if I do crazy quilting as you go type stuff, then I use, I'm going to put this one over here so I can put this on. I use, um, I use my batting, my cotton batting. Crafting is therapy. It really is. Uh, it gets you through a lot. It gives your hands something to do when you're stressed out, sitting at doctor's appointments or at the hospital with someone. I'm just adding, I'm adding the little bits on the side here because I don't want to grab that fabric right now. And I'm just, like I did before, I'm going to make it a little shorter. Hopefully, yeah, it's covering the corner up nicely. Just so I don't have a little bit in the corner. It makes it a little wider. When you're using two and a half inch strips, it's a bit wide for this project. If I was making a, like a 12 and a half inch square or something, then it would probably be fine. But for this size, it's a little big, but I wanted to use them up, excuse me. My grandma taught me to cry, sew and quilt. She was always a comic. Yeah, sometimes you just have to cry. Oh, you're welcome, Francine. You know, it's that first step. If, if you go with the thought that I am probably going to make a mess of this quilt, it might not be perfect, but I'm going to learn so much. 
Don't do something crazy. You can do something crazy complicated if you can take each step one by one. But sometimes quilt patterns are written and they're very confusing and hard to follow. But if you just take it step by step and they're like, I'm going to donate this to the animals. You know, the pets will need something. If it's totally ugly and messed up, the dogs at the Humane Society or the cats or whatever, the babies in the NICU, they're not going to care if your points didn't match up and everything's a little wonky. They're going to be happy. Now I'm just doing them one by one. See, I just kind of change up and do whatever I want. Did I miss Deborah popping in? Hi, Deborah. Hold on, I can't see. I can't see your thing. Bum, 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 bum. Deborah, hi, Robin and Chatters. Just got done with mom and pop. Okay, hi, Deborah. Someone will love it. I have made, okay, these blocks, in my opinion, are not that nice. I've showed them to several people, and everyone's like, oh, wow, Robin, those look great. And I'm like, really? I, I'm not too big on the combination of, like, that dark green in there and this. I really don't think they're all that special. The, the strips are too wide, and everyone's like, I love it. So I'm like, okay, see, if I don't love it when it's done, I know that I can pass it on to someone else who will love it. So just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's ugly or it's made bad. And I've cut up finished quilts. And then I've um, <laughs> I turned them into pillows and stuff like that. I'm like, whatever. If you don't like it, someone will, or you can cut it up. You can do the Bonnie Hunter method, and if it's ugly, that means you haven't cut the fabric small enough yet. If they can do disappearing nine patches and cut them up, I can do a disappearing quilt. People take old quilts that they find at thrift stores that have holes in it or stains, and they're cutter quilts, meaning they cut them up. And I've seen people cut up old quilts and turn them into, like, Christmas stockings and bunnies and stuff, and they sell it for a lot of money. So just because you might not like it does not mean somebody else won't and it's not necessarily ugly or anything like that. Oh, I didn't have very many of those yellows in there now, did I? I'll put this one on. Hi, Lee. I don't know. I'm just going to, every time someone says hi, I'm just going to say hi, just in case I miss someone. What's a good cotton batting to use in place of wrap and zap that won't make you scream. Oh, okay. So I use the Warm Company and they have a 100% cotton batting, no scrim. It's, I use, I use um, Warm and White and it's a white batting and Warm and Natural and it's the same as the wrap and zap. You just have to make sure you look and see that it has no scrim. It has to be needle punched. And then that's really great. Their original one, it used to be really thick batting, and then they went, their warm and plush is the thick batting, like what you just saw in that package and what I made the bowl cozies with. And the warm and white and warm and natural is the regular. I'm going to take my microphone off. I'm going to see if I can find that gypsy quilt batting really quick so I can show you the difference. Round and round we go, back to the closet. It's not the same as my old studio where I could just turn around and grab things. I actually have to actually go into the closet. Okay, I'm going to show you what this looks like, and then I'm going to open up that package of the batting and show you what that looks like. You can buy pre-cut batting if you want. So this is the Gypsy Quilter. And then it's bowl cozy pre-cut batting, and the batting is round, so you don't even have to deal with anything. Someone was very sweet and sent me this to try out. 
And if I can cut it open, it's like cutting open a package in the mail and you don't want to cut what's inside it. Ooh, that's scary. Okay, so one piece of this. And then this one I'll just tear into. Let's open this up. Now, you might think, oh, that doesn't look that much different. But when you feel it, move the iron so I don't burn myself. Okay, let's get close and personal here. This is the wrap and zap. It has a little bit of squish to it, and you can see it there. And I'm sorry, I don't see any of the comments, so I have no idea what's going on. And you see how thin this is? Look at the difference in that. Now you use two of these. I think if I use this for bowl cozies again, I'll only use one because that is definitely thick enough compared to having two of these. I think that's about equal. So to use the wrap and zap, I would just use one piece of batting compared to two. So if you already have it and you want to make sure you're using something that you 100% know, I would only use one layer of the wrap and zap. If you want to make it for your shop or family members, you can test it out and see how it works in your microwave. Make sure the bowl is not going to burn your hand. But that is crazy on how different that is compared to the wrap and zap. I don't want to melt plastic. All righty. So let me do this. Turn the iron so I don't burn myself. Now let me play catch up with comments. Oh, uh, I literally never saw a more useless video. Isn't that a nice comment? I just love when people leave me such sweet comments that I just wasted my time watching your video. Don't you ever shut up is what people tell me all the time. I'm like blocked. I don't have to talk to you anymore. Yeah, you don't have to worry about perfection. It's really hard when you first start. People are like, oh, it has to be perfect. And you see things on Instagram and those are perfect. That's why we're going hashtag Robin perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, the cover is swivel chair. I can't wait to make a scrappy cover. I'm going to make like a bonnet for this chair because the chair is fine, but I want some color on it. And I'm going to make like, like a swimmer's cap with the elastic around it. So it just, excuse me, <coughs> so it just sits over the chair. Yeah, I haven't tried them yet, Leon, but they're nice and thin. Bye, Giovanna. Yeah, those, those from Gypsy Quilter, they look really great. I love how thin it is. Yeah, if you don't like something, there's a lot of videos I watch that I don't make. I hope you're having something good for dinner. Yeah, I think it's just, I don't know what they commented on. They commented on some other video, one of my tutorials. Okay, you can lurk. We'll talk in the background. Pop in if you hear something good. Yeah, so people, I know a lot of people, they're used to the tutorials that are like three and a half minutes long or five minutes long and stuff. They don't want to listen to me for 20 minutes. And I repeat myself and I go slow and I give all those extra tips and tricks. People, a lot of people don't want that. And that's fine. But I'm not going to stop doing it. One, because I don't think I can. I tried. And two, because so many people find it helpful. I get so many comments. Thank you so much for this video. I, I couldn't figure out how to make zipper pouches until I saw this video and stuff like that. So I'm not going to stop. I do edit out more jibber jabber now. Like if I were doing a video today, it would probably be really chitty chatty, but I'm not gonna get rid of things. I just take out a little bit so that it's not too bad, you know, not too, too bad, but whatever. If you've been doing videos and when you're first on new on YouTube, it's kind of hard. It's kind of scary. Rude comments make you cry for days. Why does everyone hate me? But then you got to remember one rude comment versus 200 nice comments. And then after a while, you're like, hey, it's my channel. I can just block you or delete the comment. I'm not going to respond anymore. Sometimes I respond to the rude comment and then I delete my comment just because it feels good to say <laughs> things to people. Thank you. I appreciate it, Jackie. It's 
Sorry, I'm reading comments. <laughs> Some people want me to read all the comments as they're coming through because if they're watching the replay and the comments don't always show up for 24 hours and sometimes they don't show up for two weeks. But I watch a few people who stop and read all the comments and then they sew for 10 minutes and then they read all the comments. And it just, that's not a channel for me. And I don't, you know, if that's what people wanna do and that's what they enjoy, that's great. We can all do whatever makes us happy, but for me, that's not, it, it kind of messes with the flow a little bit for me. So I just find another one. A lot of times I stay subscribed to channels and I never watch their videos because I like what they're doing. I just only like three videos a year and you know, it is what it is. You can't please everybody, right? In regular life or in YouTube life. Thank you, Laura. I really do appreciate all of my people and I know I'm a lurker and I like videos and don't comment and I really appreciate my lurkers too. You guys, if, if it wasn't for all of you, well, first of all, I'm not really sure how I would be able to support myself. And also, I mean, I just wouldn't make videos anymore. I mean, if, if nobody's gonna enjoy your videos, you, you know, what's the point of making the videos, right? Things change over the years. I've changed a little bit on my style and how I do things. It's going to change again. I know it will. It's just inevitable. It's been a rough time since Rob passed and then the move. So I feel like things are going to not necessarily change, change, but I have that list that I can't wait to start making the new tutorials. I just got to find my rhythm and get my house unpacked. That's kind of irritating me when I can't find half of what I need. Oh, it's hard reading. Definitely need more coffee. It's hard to read. It's hard to read nasty comments on other people's pages. Some people just leave the comments for everyone to see. But I feel like if it hurts my feelings for the moment or it makes me mad, I don't want you guys to see it. If it's a nice, 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 and then they just throw that little barb in the end, sometimes I'll leave it. But if you don't like the way I do my channel, then you know, find another channel. We're not for everybody, you know? Why, why would you, you wouldn't be friends with someone if you don't like you know how they are. You wouldn't eat at a restaurant if you don't like the food. Why are you going to hang out at a YouTube channel if you're just going to constantly leave negative comments? And really, I don't, I don't say these things, but you hear other people saying it in the channels on their YouTube, like, this is my YouTube channel. This is my space. I'm going to run it the way I want. I'm going to do what I want and say what I want. And if you don't like it, you can leave. And while I get that at the same time you don't want to just make videos for uh for yourself you know you kind of want to make videos that people are going to enjoy i'm generally a lurker but just wanted to comment to say i specifically watch your videos for how chatty you are so you keep me company while i'm saying thank you anna i appreciate that and i know a lot of my videos got a little bit shorter and less chatty during all of this process so that's why I'm trying to get, I don't want to do that. I need to press these. I want to get back to doing what we all love, the chattier videos, the, cause you never know. I have to laugh like, okay, with yesterday's video, if you didn't watch the tutorial, I've said this a couple times in videos, but you missed it at the end when I just throw things out and I say, oh, by the way, did you know that you can put half used bobbins in the top of your sewing machine? Put a full bobbin in the bottom when you're doing these and use all of those bobbins up that only have a yard or two of thread on it. Put it in the top of your machine. That way you can see when it's running out and you won't be playing thread chicken. And it's so much quicker and easier to change. Even with my drop-in bobbin, I put the partials up top and I just go through and change them as I need it. So if you didn't watch that video because I was too chatty, you didn't click on it because it's 20 something minutes long, you missed that little tidbit. 
Yeah, you don't have to be nasty, but it's those keyboard warriors. They they don't realize, you know, especially now with YouTube, everyone's got weird names and numbers. So you really don't know who you're talking to. I just kind of leave. If something I don't like it, I just leave. How you do your lives and videos is wonderful. Don't pay attention to those. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, I don't... People sometimes, they're just not... <laughs> yeah, you got to come in for the cute iron, right? Normally, I would never spend this amount of money just for myself, but I did it for you guys, too. I fought buying an Elise, so I'm like, I don't need it, but the big one comes up and stuff. Now, the big one definitely is heavy. So for those of you that can't handle a heavy iron, I would stay away from that one. With or without water, it's heavy. This one, I can feel it, but it's not bad. And of course, you don't have to put water in it. I do, because I, I love steam. I've noticed this one doesn't sit there and steam nonstop. Like the big iron steams on its own. This one, I have to press the buttons. Ooh, look at it dance. And make it steam, but it works. Again, an iron for each thing. I took one for the team and bought an iron, right? Well, and you don't know either. I'm going to be completely honest. I'll tell you good points and bad points because what's a good point for me might be something bad for Jody. And what Jody loves, I might not like at all. So you kind of have to give all of the points and see. And I know some people don't like when I do, because I tell you, I've got, in the next couple of weeks, I have a, a sponsored video coming up. A company sent me this little tiny, look, it fits in my palm, a little printer. It doesn't do anything exciting, but print basic labels, but it's a lot cheaper than a Cricut. I think it's like $40 or less, and the little labels come in a couple different sizes, but you can print flour. You can print blue scraps on it. So I'll have this video coming up after I record the video and they approve it, but that'll be coming up soon. Wow, it got really fiber dusty in here. So I, I have to do sponsored videos every now and then to help to keep affording to doing this. And I also have to you know, show different tools. When you guys send me things, I like to show different things. I'm not an affiliate. I haven't set up my affiliate Come on, where does that go? It fits in here somehow. I haven't set up affiliate links on Amazon and stuff because to be honest with you, it's a lot of work and I just haven't done it. And then you have to keep like promoting and stuff and all that. So I don't do that. Your views, your likes, your comments, your support on Patreon, and you putting up with me when three times a year I do a video that may or may not have anything to do with crafting. When I did those sourdough bread videos, the bread box, so many of you really enjoyed it and you purchased the bread boxes. So I, I kind of really liked that bread. That was really good. My daughter just bought one of the two small irons. Don't dare use it before she does those. So we'll have to wait for a bit to try it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I, I tell you... If I hadn't sold my house, I wouldn't. I mean, it's, it's technically a business expense because I really don't do much. Pers I really don't do any personal sewing, to be realistic here. So let me see. You, you need a, you need a something. I need to dig into. The, oh, I got a purple. I can use this. I'm like, I think I'm gonna need to dig into my other strips. Why are you not using your little strips instead of the big ones? Because these little strips. I've already used the ones that are long enough. Some, well, this one might be working, but some of these aren't, they're just not big enough to do some of those corners and stuff. So that's why I haven't been using these. Oh, that one might, mm, yeah, that one might. So it's just, it's hit and miss on them. And these I'm gonna use, I might turn, there's enough of them. I might turn these into a weird scrappy pillow. I even cut off the salvages. I'll make a fabric postcard to remember the quilt by. And then I'll go from there and maybe I'll make, like you said, a pillow or something. So what do I have? I have this yellow. So yeah, on some of these I can, and some of them, I got to turn crooked. I can't. And sometimes when I'm talking, I just lose track of what I can and can't do and I forget. 
my pink iron pad. Oh, this little thing. Yeah, isn't it cute? It looks like a pineapple to me. You know I love pineapples. Yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. You know, I know we don't like those answers from our kids, but it's like, I don't know. I don't worry about using up scraps as much as someone else does because, you know, I sew with scraps. I'll turn it into a zipper pouch or something. I'm not super worried. And like right here, this one has a longer one, so I have to use a bigger strip on this one. Normally, when I do my string blocks, I take my scrap. I did, really did not have the energy to go through my scrap ins and cut up a different scrap colors and in different lengths and stuff, and I use them all. But this way, I totally went the lazy route and used the leftover mini jelly roll strips here and just went with that. So you need to be ironed, but you need another thing. Okay, this one can have... So thank you, I'm using up more of these. Thank you for the reminder. Usually it's just because I forget. Because I forget. Make bags, yep, yep, yep. Oh yeah, I love to do more things. I, I love to make a bunch. And I, I this year I want to do more crafts, but I, as I said before, I don't know if you saw the video, but I'm gonna have to do it on my Patreon channel simply because it really messes with YouTube. When I was mixing things in and just doing different stuff, it messes with the algorithm. And since I'm building a business community, a paycheck, I have to kind of follow the YouTube algorithm rules. But Patreon is doing more and more that's gonna allow us to do free content. So we can go hang out over there. I can do live streams over there too. My patrons aren't really interested in live streams, but so far, I don't think live streams affect the algorithm as much as regular videos. We'll find out when I start doing some, when I start pulling out my, um, my embroideries and stuff like that and working on that again. You guys like them on Saturday? Yeah, I thought we'd do Saturday for a while and see how it is. And with being the weird, the whole weird not changing times, I'm like, what time is it? I'm sorry, you guys have to figure it out. Because when I watch, oh, being over here in mountain time, no daylight savings times, when I'm watching the UK people, I'm like, I don't know what time. They, I do the Bakery Bears, and I'm one of their patrons. And once a month, the last Sunday of the month, they do a live stream. And, okay, I can't watch it live anymore because I think with the British summertime, it's at like 6 a.m. And while I could be awake at 6 a.m. because I usually get up around 5, I can't be coherent enough to, <laughs> to watch it live anymore. So we just all have to figure out, you know, what time it is everywhere. But I'll start doing things. If it affects the algorithm, I'll do the lives over on Patreon. And you guys can watch stuff like that for free when I do weird random things. Okay, hold on. Hi, question you're probably, I've talked about it. Did you have a chance to visit Arizona during a summer fall? Oh no, no, we just came here blindly, but my daughter's friends, who is also her boss, they moved here last June to the surprise area. They were here before us, so they lived through the summer and they said it was fine. It was hot, but it's hot in Florida. I know a lot of people warn me about it being hot, but I don't think you guys realize with the humidity how hot Florida can be and stuff. Especially I was in Southwest Florida, so the more south you go, the more humid and hot it is. I mean, it's hot everywhere, of course, but... So we're already used to... We had temperatures that were like 99. It feels like 118 with the humidity and stuff. Now... Check me in July and August, and I'll tell you, you know, if it's crazy different than what I'm used to. But for right now, I love to do EPP. I am struggling with my hands. Since we moved here, I don't know if I pinched something sleeping on the new bed, but both of my hands at various times get pins and needles, and that's just a neck issue that I have. But it seems to have gotten much worse lately so I have a hard time holding the needles and stuff 
and getting my eyeballs to adjust to do the EPP, but I really do love it. I'm gonna to totally cheat. I have the, if you've been here for a long time, you've seen my stars, my Samoan stars. I have a couple of Whip It Wednesdays and stuff where I showed them. I am going to pull them back out and totally cheat and I'm gonna machine sew them. See, like right now, my right hand is shaking so much. I'm gonna machine sew them so that I can actually get them finished and not let them just sit there. Oh, died. Yeah, I mean, we just, we're not all. No alligators in Arizona. I mean, they had alligators in Cape Coral that come right up and knock on your door. Florida is very, very muggy. Oh, yeah, after the rain and stuff like that, it's crazy. I mean, when you walk out at 7, 8 in the morning and you hit a wall of mugginess and it, the sun's barely risen and stuff, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's a different type of heat. So we'll see. Just lizards and snakes. No, knock, knock. We haven't seen any, um, any snakes yet. Hey, Laura Lynn. Um, so we'll see. Hi, Teresa. I didn't see you pop in, Teresa. Did you just, I missed you. I don't know how long you've been here. I'm sorry if I've missed you. Yeah, we haven't seen any snakes yet. Uh, my kids have gone and done some hiking and stuff. And to, to be really realistic, I had all of these nice expectations. I'm going to do this, going to do that. But the reality is, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do different things. I can't hike, hike. I think we need to press. I don't know where I'm at. So I'm just going to go psh and do it over here. Now, will I hike uh, short distances? You know, we'll call them more of a walk than a hike. But I don't know what kind of creatures I'm going to see. I've seen in the surprise Facebook groups that people have snakes right in their yards. So at any given time, I could possibly see a snake. Right now, it's too cold. So who said that? Who said they should leave? Oh, I think, Francine, you might be a little bit behind. Yeah, I just had that comment pop up. People leave nasty comments all the time. It's part of being on YouTube. You just have to get a thick skin, laugh about it. Like I said, sometimes I just like to scream and yell in my head, and I tell my kids, hey, look at this comment. I can't believe someone left this comment there. All right, this one's done. How rude. I swear at them, I yell at them, but you know, you can't, you can't get into an argument with people like that on the computer, whether you're in YouTube or a Facebook group or whatever, they are just looking to get you riled up and to, to hurt your feelings, make you cry, make you swear. That's what they want. So you just don't give it to them. They'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you know. I don't know. I, I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to be hot. Right, well, 100% we're going to have the AC on. The electric bill is going to be too high. The electric is really pretty close to the Florida because we could see how much you pay per kilowatt and we compared it to Florida. And I can't remember if it was 0.5 higher, 0.5 lower, but whatever, it's going to be pretty close. Some people have had four, five, six, eight hundred dollar $800 electric bills here from looking in the, the Facebook group, but I don't know. We'll see. All right, this one's good. This one's good. This one's good. All right, so these all need to be sewn. There we go. All righty then, let's go back. And I, I brought my little baggie out. I do have those solids that I can pop in, especially just on the corners and stuff. That won't hurt my feelings. I wasn't too thrilled with the entire solid strip being on there. But here, go over there and leave me alone. I don't want to play with you no more. We'll put these on. Oh, look, this isn't, uh, let's put this blue on. This one's pretty. Let me make sure. Oh, thumbs up, everyone. Thank you so much. Hi, Terry. You're from, Terry's from Manchester, PA, and she made it over here from Kate from the um, Last Homely House by the Sea. Kate has a great channel, doesn't she? I started watching Kate. I think she had 250 subscribers. And now what? I think she's well over 100, isn't she? It was just 
such a nice, and I'm not saying her channel's not nice, but I just, it was just such a nice, it was just like, a f I love getting in at the ground floor of things. It was just me, Kate, and a handful of people. She maybe got like five comments and stuff, and it was just really fun. I mean, it's still fun, but it's just not, it's just not me and Kate anymore. There's a whole bunch of people hanging out. I loved hanging out in her garden and seeing what she was working on and stuff like that. Kate's a good channel to watch for like multi-crafting stuff or cooking, baking. She has a second channel now for her garden and stuff, but it's really fun. I like multi-channels. And Kate and I, we were going back and forth for a while. We were like, okay, do you watch? Okay, you should go watch. Hey, let's go hang out with Kate. Let's go hang out with Robin. It was really a lot of fun. I like watching channels like when they go on adventures, meaning they go to Walmart or the gardening center. I like TV shows where they're like an hour long and you get to know the characters, you know, you get to know the people. And then I like YouTube channels where you get to know the people. I don't watch too many straight up tutorial YouTube channels because I don't care if I can see your face or not. That doesn't bother me. You know, like the way I do mine and stuff, that doesn't bother me if I never see your face. I just like to get to know you. Like, what do you like to eat? What do you do on the weekends? I want to be friends with all of the people. Even if they never know that I'm watching the channel because I don't always have time to leave comments. But I like to get to know them and feel like, hey, you know, we're buddies. Oh, wonderful, Francine. You can learn a lot from Kate's channel, too. And if you look up the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop, they have a channel, too. Laurelyn was just in here, and she does live streams, uh, cross-stitching live streams and sewing live streams. So she has all kinds of fun things, too, and you can pick up. Because we all do things differently, you're going to pick up tips and tricks from everybody else it's like before I do tutorials unless it's something I'm just kind of making up like this I like to watch a dozen videos as many videos as I can find to try to find little tips and tricks for you guys that you may or may not have seen oh and you see this I just put my presser foot down so it can hold my block remember your presser foot is like a third hand for you let it hold your fabric and your block until you can come back and do what you need to. The last homely garden, yes. Last home, it's the last homely house garden. I think if you could put the last homely house and the last homely house garden one way or the other, you're gonna find both of those channels. And remember, just because you just found the channel now, go back and watch some of their older stuff. Sometimes it's fun to see, like. When I first started doing it, I guess I had a bit more Southern style to it because a lot of my videos, I talked like this and it was a little awkward. And then I realized that if we don't want to be here all day, I need to pick it up a little bit. Let's talk a little bit faster so we can get things done. I can say twice as many things if I talk faster. And you also have to wait until the people get a little comfortable, you know? You, you have to get comfortable with doing YouTube, being in front of the camera. Some people say just talk to it like you're talking to one of your friends. I just do, because I talk to myself out loud. Ever since Rob passed, I, it's like there's no one to say quit talking to yourself. So I talk to myself, I sing, I dance. The cats don't care. My kids might think I'm a little weird now because I still talk out loud to myself and I repeat things like I've watched Harry Potter so many times and read the book so many times. Oh no, look at what I did. That's it. Throw away the entire quilt. I have two of the same fabrics on the same block. Oh no, what will I ever do? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. I don't care. I, I've now reached the silly part of my day. I've been, well, we've been on here for like two hours now, so it kind of gets a little weird after a bit. But I want to start, I finished them all, so let's start trimming them up, right? That's it. All done. I don't know how many more blocks I'll need. I'll have to lay them all out to see. 
<laughs> out to sea, S-E-A, that would be funny. All right, so those are all done. That we don't need. I can only bring this over, so, oh no, the cord's long enough, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I, after a while I get a little slap happy crazy. Oh yeah, it took her what, like five, six years to do that? Yeah, I, and, and I always know the answer too. I yell at myself a lot too. I, I, my middle name is Suzanne, so I do that a lot. Robin Suzanne, because that's what I heard growing up. Robin Suzanne, what do you think you're doing? You knew, <laughs> I was talking to a friend about this. I was underneath the table getting stuff out. I was changing some of the shirts out for the cats. There was a cat fight last night, little s'moresies sliced whiskers nose open she shook her head there was blood up on the t-shirts the underneath the, the table here and stuff so I was down there and I keep telling myself don't hit your head you're under the table don't hit your head of course I hit my head so you know I yell at myself all the time yeah everyone says they they love the long videos and they're like oh the long videos I'm glad they're back so I'm trying to do a combo you know, a long video for those that like the long videos and maybe a not so long video, especially when I'm redoing a video and I'm like, I've already made 17 zipper pouch videos, but I want to show you this one cool part. So it's like, if you've never made a zipper pouch, go watch this video. So let me just show you a quick 10 minute video. And so I can show you this cool thing. Oh, I reply to myself all the time. There's no one else here to answer my question, especially if it's a crafty one. And I talk to the videos. I can watch a video from 10 years ago and someone will say, hey, what do you think about this? And I, I already know the quilt's done because I already saw that video. I'll be like, no, don't do it, don't do it. Okay, turn this off so it can go to sleep and cool down. I did notice that the big iron takes a long time to cool down. So I put it over... My daughter's cats like to chew on cords, so I'm really careful. Make sure I put the the irons up out of the way. But I like to, I don't want the, the irons sit like this when they're sitting on a shelf. I like to put them down, but I have to wait for it to cool off before I can put it down because I haven't found my large silicone match yet. Excuse me, I'm coming over here around you. Don't mind me. Okay. Ow! Ooh! <laughs> I'm attached. <laughs> I got underneath the cutting board and I got attached. Am I still good? I'm still good. I have threads all over me. I went to the store the other day with threads on me and I'm like, nobody knows me here. I don't know anybody. I'm not going to see anyone from high school. I'm not going to see anyone from a previous job. It doesn't matter. But yeah, um, they take a long time to cool down and whatever else I was talking about. All right, so I have to go and get my 12 and a half inch ruler. Here we go. It's on the black shelves. Got it. I wasn't thinking we were gonna be on here long enough to actually cut the blocks, but Chatty Robin, and you guys are hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Oh, deep breaths. Oh, I missed it. I'm sorry to hear that too, Rose. I'm sorry I missed what it was. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. I've had people in the past say, Robin, I put your videos on. Whoa. I put your videos on before I go to bed because your calming voice helps me sleep. And like, I, I've listened to old videos and my voice due to the allergies and stuff has changed so much over time. All right. I have had one person claim one of these fabric postcards. If anyone else wants one, I have a, a Q or a B. <laughs> And then there's that one, and I was trying different things. So it's nice to play with, oh wow, they're still, these are really bad because I apologize. They're already sealed up. There's, I don't think you can see the threads in it and everything. Yikes. You could tell that was from a while back. I try to keep improving every time I do something. Okay. So I have so many fun things planned, and I think there may come a time where uh, I might need a little break again. And that time, I was thinking to take off. If 
you know, you have to plan for the future. If something happens and I need to work on my shop more or I need to do computer stuff more or something, I could always do the Whip It Wednesday and the live streams and take off the Friday tutorials, trim it to six and a half by nine and a half. I'm not going to worry about keeping that strip perfectly in the center. I'm just going to guesstimate where it goes and wherever it lands, it lands. I'm not worried about it. So I'm like, I have, I have to, you know, think about what are you going to do with your channel? What are your options? So I thought, well, if I had to, I could just do Whip It Wednesdays and then a live or two throughout the month. Or if I had to, you know, I could just do live streams or just Whip It Wednesday or something. Because, I mean, can you do YouTube forever? Some people have been on YouTube for well over 10 years and more. Thank you, Francine. Uh, I've been enjoying spending time with them. Isn't it fun to just listen to people in the background? I like some of those. Our dog is going. Oh, I thought you said your dog was baking. <laughs> I'm like, your dog bakes? Oh, the yard guys. Do you usually do a stay stitch around the blocks after trimming? Nope. I just put... I'll take, I'll leave the paper on until I'm ready to sew this together. And then I'll just sew my blocks together. When I do my random blocks, cause I have all of my blocks in, you know, just, I have a container full of blocks, single blocks that I didn't do anything with. Those don't have stitching around it. I just don't play with them. I just stick them in a Ziploc bag or a plastic bin and I just leave them there. And then when I do it, I, I really, since I don't send my quilts to long armors, I don't even do that victory lap around where you sew all the way around. Although I think if I'm going to be making quilt tops and not finishing them, that would be a very good idea. If you have a lot of seams in your blocks, it's a good idea to do that stay stitch around because it keeps them seams from popping. But I was always like, thread's expensive. I can't afford it. I'm not going to. Um, Jody, by the way, you've got a package coming in the mail, just, just so you know. Thank you, Jody. And I sent you something. I will always keep my shop open. That's the thing. If I need to take some time off, it's going to be to make stuff for the shop, to get caught up on sewing and stuff like that. I'm just trying to organize my time better and get back into the rhythm. And I'm just feeling that point between moving and getting settled and getting back because let's face it I've been kind of off for a while now you guys probably don't even notice because I've been off for so long I have good days and bad days but you guys aren't always here for my bad days because they're on days that I'm not doing videos or whatever like I was telling my son I feel so frazzled because I'm still working on my patreon video and that's got to go up tomorrow at nine and this is like really late for me to be working on it. He's like, well, were you procrastinating all week? I'm like, I don't know what I did all week. When I go to bed at night, I tend to forget what I did that day. And I start the next day fresh, which can be frustrating because I don't know what I accomplished. So I'm going to get back to doing my notes. Uh, thank you, Caroline. Is it for one of the fabric postcards or just a note in general? So if you want a fabric postcard, just send me your mailing address. I'd love to send it out to you. What paper? Oh, I am using... You can use printer paper. It's a little thick. I'm using school lined paper. I actually ripped it out of a spiral notebook. But when the school paper goes on sale, I buy the really cheap, cheap stuff because it's thin. And it's really easy to tear the, whoa, that was, that was weird. This seam right here made the paper go wonky and made these lines look wavy. I'm like, whoa, is that my eyes or is the ruler warped or something? It's just because of the hump. That was crazy. Anyway, yeah, I find that the school paper is really thin. You can use it for the postcard. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, that must be the dogs, yeah. Jody, 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 Jody. Yeah, Jody, like, I told Jody, I said, I don't care. Tell him you made it. It doesn't matter to me. 
there's usually my my shop's names on it. You'd have to take the tags off. That's also why some of my tags are being sewn in so they can't be cut off. So that people can be reminded, hey, where did I get this from? Oh, yeah, Robin made that for me. Or I bought that from Robin, however you want to look at it. Some people take labels off. Some, no, not Jody. This is not, oh, I got more blocks. It's not what we're talking about. But some people will take labels off of quilts. And then they say they made it. And I, I think that's, a, they made it and they sell it in their shops is what I should finish my thought process. When you sell it and you say you made it and you didn't because you just took someone else's label off, that's totally wrong. But if you want to say, hey, you know, whatever, I'm good. I'm good. Big Chief tablets. Yeah, um, some people say, like, go to the Dollar Tree and get the drawing pads and stuff. That's really thin. You just want something that's thin. It, you can do it with printer paper, but that's not your best option. If you can find newsprint... Tracing paper. I've seen people do it on tissue paper, freezer paper. You just want, oh, wrapping paper. Buy the really cheap see-through wrapping paper at like the Dollar Tree because you get a whole roll for a buck and a quarter and then go ahead and use that. That, I, that works really well. Yeah, that's not cool, right, Jody? I know Jody would never do that. Jackie's looking for something. I started doing a Google research yesterday. Didn't finish until 4. Ooh. You didn't find what you needed. Darn. That's frustrating. I'm like, how can there be nothing on the internet for me, right? Hey, there you go. Susan, that's perfect. The toilet papers that are wrapped up and you're recycling and stuff. I bought so much when the school paper stuff went on sale. I would buy a bunch for the kids for school. And then they started using the the Chromebooks and stuff, and they didn't use paper anymore. I'm like, I've got paper. When we moved, I donated stuff to some teachers, to local teachers and homeschoolers. Like, I've had this stuff for 10 years. I've had all these crayons and colored pencils and paint sets and stuff, and it's all good. It's just I bought it when it was a quarter. Like those 70-page spiral notebooks, they were like a dime. So we'd go and we'd buy like 60 of them because the kids would go through so many. And I'd give them to Robbie when he was little to like draw. And I'd use it for like meal planning and shopping lists and stuff. I mean, it's 10 cents for 70 sheets of paper. Oh, yeah. Phone books. Yep, you can use phone books. All kinds of stuff. Just feel it and see if it's thin. Because remember, you've got to sew through it and then peel it off. The thicker paper tends to pull out your stitches. My stitches, I did pop down to a 1.6. You can go even smaller, but it takes longer to sew when it's smaller, you know? I don't want to take forever. Dun, dun, dun. And when we get this, I'll, we'll talk for a few more minutes. You know how I like to say goodbye forever? I was looking at something on Instagram, and they say if you have, if you're an adult with ADHD or whatever, you have a hard time saying goodbye. Every time you go to say goodbye, you think of five more things to say. And I'm like, gee, <laughs> I just kind of thought maybe that this was like my personality. But the more I see things, everyone wants to put a label on stuff. But I'm like, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe I have a little bit of that or I just have a little bit of Italian in me. Newspaper, yep. You can get uh, newsprint. I know we used to be able to get... They still had newspapers in Florida, of course. We could buy the end bolt of a newspaper roll because they only use it to a certain point, and at the end, they just sell it or throw it away, donate it to schools. So you could get that for free or to buy it. All right, one more. One more, one more, one more. It's nice to find uses for things you already own or for things that came into your house with your purchases and stuff. So you're not just throwing it all into the trash. I try to be as responsible as I can, but let's face facts, none of us are perfect, and I like my Ziploc baggies. I, If I'm going to use something, I'm not going to... I thought about the reusable Ziploc bags and stuff, but the reality is... Where can I put this so I don't break it? <laughs> The reality is, is I'm not going to wash out a Ziploc bag and use it again. 
I'm going to, I'd rather put the food in a plastic container if I'm going to do that, or a glass container, I should say. I bought some nice glass containers for storage. I'll go through this later today while sitting down chatting, doing comments, or watching TV, and I'll pull the paper off, and I'll cut off these big pieces so that I can add it to all of my little pieces in here and create something fun with it. So they won't go to waste. Look, I'm still drinking this. I think it's only down to about here now. Wow, Jackie, that's crazy good price. <clears throat> yeah, right, Jody? Uh, my daughter and I both do the same thing. So we're like, okay, my daughter's like, okay, I, I need to leave in about 20 minutes. I'm like, okay, I'll walk you out to the car. And then we stand at the car and talk until I'm either too hot, I stand in fire ants, or I, uh, it rains or something or whatever, and then, then she leaves. Okay, good. Because I'm like, because you know how they always try to put a label on everything now, try to explain everything? And that's fine, I don't complain. But I'm like, I'm 55, I'm just Robin. This is how I've always been, this is how I am, you know, this is it. Okay, so here we go. I had to laugh when I was making the video and editing it because every time I got to this second line, I couldn't, I can't, <laughs> if you pull it just a little bit, you can pop it. I struggled with that one. Now I'll go back later and I'll trim off this excess here because I don't need to have that in my quilt. Not hell speed bumps. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. The Dollar Tree has the lines on it too. It makes it a lot easier to trim them. I get an old, I, I haven't found my one that rotary cutter that says paper on the back or not, but when these get too dull to cut fabric, I downgrade them. This one is for cutting batting and fabric. And then I have my good fabric only one. And I remember an old dull mat that you need to replace will make your blade dull up faster. But then I put paper in it because it's still good to trim paper and stuff. You can just slide your finger in there. Because the smaller stitching will make it perforate and pop off easier. You can also give this to the kids and tell them, you know, for every block they can get like a Hershey's Kiss. I don't know if kids are actually motivated for that stuff. You have to have the right age. This one's glued, so it takes a minute to get it. Maybe I shouldn't glue right to the corner and it'll be easier to pull off. I'll do that one last. But sit down, relax, watch a movie, get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and just pop the papers off. Ooh, I can keep you guys closer now. I can see better over here. Yeah, I have a bunch of paper from moving. Uh, they gave us a lot when I bought boxes from Home Depot. And I saved it for my daughter's boss slash friend. She's really good friends with the wife, and she's friends with him, good friends with him too, but whatever. They have some young kids that are still of the drawing and coloring age, and I was going to give that to them. But maybe I should keep it for foundation blocks. I don't know if I kept... Oh, that glue really worked good. Look at that. I don't know if I kept all of my school line paper. I'll have to wait and see as I'm unpacking more things. I don't use that mango glue stick very often because it's just sometimes can be weird, but wow, that worked really well. So look, put all that in the recyclable. There's another block that's ready to go. So we should probably start doing our goodbyes and saying thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you to anyone who's made it this long on the replay. I appreciate you guys liking my videos, subscribing. Remember when we hit 50,000 and I find the flamingo quilt? I know I had it at the kids' house. I just have to refine it. I will uh I'll be giving away the flamingo quilt and the spool quilt or and or I haven't decided yet whether we'll have two winners or we'll just let one winner choose which one they want. And then I'll either keep or sell the other one. We'll see. We'll also do some fabric postcards and some zipper pouches. So we want to make sure we can get our inter international peeps in. I need to make some more note cards. I really need to do some Amazon shopping. I've been avoiding it because I know I'm going to spend a, a good chunk of money because I need to buy all new 
will replenish my, oh, I should have waited. I'm still doing the glue spot. I need to replenish all my office supplies. I need to buy new uh, comic book, uh, more comic book board for my postcards, new clear envelopes. I need uh, uh, the sticky paper that I use for my addresses. Bye, Zoteri. Bye, Robin's Quilt Basket. There's a question about uh, why you glue on the one strip. Oh, thanks, Sue. I've been had my head down. I glue the first strip just to keep it lined up in the center. If I was just putting a orange strip down here, I wouldn't worry about it. But because I want... We'll pretend this works. Because I want my white strips to sort of kind of line up, I put the glue to hold it in place. You can use pins. You can, um, you, you don't have to use anything. It just varies. I use the glue this time just because I want that white strip to line up nicely. That's the only reason. Anytime, Judy. I love to entertain people and keep them company. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me all the time. I hadn't seen the comment till you mentioned it. One of my knitters is telling me she's back to the original hospital and out of quarantine in two days. To top it off, she has COVID. Oh, no. You're getting very hungry when we went directly through lunch. Yeah, same thing here. It's it's after one o'clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and I will probably have a big meal and then at dinner time I'll just have a sandwich. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Um we will do some oh I still gotta finish my <laughs> quick lunch because I still have to finish my Patreon video. I have no idea what we're doing next week for a tutorial, but you can guarantee we'll do something or nothing. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, thank you guys so much. I think I'm repeating myself. Where am I? I am in, I am in, where am I? I am in Surprise, Arizona. I've been here since the last couple days of February. So we are on month two. I lived in Florida. Cape Coral, Florida, south of Tampa, north of Naples. Lived there for, what, 42 years? Jan and Darlene lurking here in Oklahoma. Glad you're settling in. Thank you, Darlene. Yep, we're settling in, doing pretty good. But I'm going to press the button. And uh, remember, Faber Postcards, I have one more left if you want to send me your mailing address. And uh, if I get too many, I'll just say I'm sorry, I can't send any more. But I do have others besides this that if someone said they wanted one, I could mail them out. By the way, these do have the wrong mailing address because it was a stamp. I'm just going to, I don't know, cross it off or leave it on there. I don't know. So if you get a weird address, return address thing, then that's because it's the wrong address. That's how long ago I've had them. But bye, everyone. Have a great time, and I will see you next time. Thank you for joining me. Where is the X? There it is.